with its industrial action. UTAG has been on strike for days over what it says is the unilateral variation of the conditions of service of workers of public universities to their disadvantage without recourse to them. In a statement co-signed by the National UTAC President Professor Solomon Nunu and the National Secretary Dr. Asaria Santiano, UTAC also noted that its review of the 2023 budget statement points to a, uni, um, a, a unilinear imposition of more austere measures that are likely to negatively impact the already impoverished public sector worker. And I would want to uh, stay on this subject and speak briefly to um, Professor Solomon Nunu, who is national president of UTAG on the way forward. So, Prof, a very good afternoon to you and thank you for joining us on Midday Live on TV3. Good afternoon and thank you for having us. You have clearly stated that uh, your strike still continues unabated, uh, but uh, you have a few exceptions. What are these exceptions and why are they important and why do we not consider that to call off the strike? Um, since the strike was declared on the 17th of, of, of October, it's been about six weeks now. And if you look at the situation and the posture of um, the employer, it doesn't seem as if the employer is in a rush to get the issues um, addressed. And that is what we find to be very, very appalling at this time because you expect that the, the, the employer will take advantage of the situation, what is happening currently in the country, and ensure that some of these things are addressed. Remember that the academic calendar of public universities have been highly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, and we are taking steps to try to rectify it. However, um, behaviors and posturing like these do not help the cause of UTAG at all. How many engagements have you had with government or their representative, the National Labor Commission, on this? Um, for the National Labor Commission, we've had about five engagements with them and about ten or so with government or some government functionaries within the period um, under review. But in all of this, um, you'll see that they do not come to the table with any without to negotiate. It's like they come in there and there's no proper mandate to negotiate. For each reason, it's like um, nothing fruitful takes place in most of these engagements. But if the meetings are the grounds where you can deliberate and agree or disagree on issues, and you're saying that in all you've had about 15 meetings and nothing fruitful is coming out, how then do we make progress? What do you foresee as the next line of action from your side? Um, then for us here, we believe that then we'll have to continue to be on strike action because uh, calling off the strike to go back to the classroom um, doesn't solve the problem in any way. Because what we are looking at here is that these are issues related to fuel. And you and I know that fuel prices are not coming down anytime soon. And this amount we are looking at here is 10 to 99 pesos, which is just about half of what the market price is today. So you'll notice that the government needs to show more seriousness in addressing these issues, which they have not done so far. Uh, we think they should come to such negotiations with a clear mandate to negotiate. At any time you call UTAG or any uh, labor union, I believe they could come in with the uh, confidence that you are ready to get something sorted out. Like this afternoon, we need to go to the labor commission. But everybody looks at it and we ask ourselves, will anything change today because at the same time also they have called another meeting to discuss base pay and it's the same set of people who are to be at the labor commission who are also going to be at the labor at the base pay negotiations at the ministry of health conference room so you look at it and you are like it's like um how do you call two meetings at the same time all starting at 3 p.m and you don't see the way for it Right, and, and the way forward, I'm sure, is what many are asking for. And still on the, the bit where you just landed about uh, the base pay negotiations, um, you, and you, I'm referring to Labour, is asking for 60%. Government says it's got just 15%. You're going to be part of that negotiation. Are we likely to see a compromise on this where you can find a common ground from either side? Um, as it stands today, um, Labour have tabled our position, which we have sent the government in writing. So far, government have not put anything in writing. All they have said is that 
um, they will want to do the normal negotiations, you know, like the way you go to the market and you say, uh, Madam, can you reduce the cost of the metal for me and so on. So that is what government is doing with that. We believe that if they had put it on paper and then there's compelling evidence as to why they believe this is the best posture, that the position that they need to table, then it will help us for us to say, yes, now we have a basis for us to start negotiating. In our case, what we are saying is that if you look at the base pay in 2014 and also in 2021, um, uh, 2022, what government has given us is COLA, which has not really helped any uh, much. If you look at the base pay also, base pay at the 2010, at the time of enrolling onto the single spine, it was such that um, it was 10% higher than the minimum wage. Currently, as we speak, the base pay is trailing the minimum wage by about 16%. Hmm. So we need to look at covering that ground and also looking at other variables. These are all the things we have put together and sent the analysis to government and told them that for that reason, we need a base pay of um, 60%. When it comes to the relativity difference, at the inset of single spine, what was designed was that relativity difference from one notch to another is going to be 3%. However, as we talk today, it is still 1.7% without any increase. We are saying that we need to start working on a roadmap to achieve the 3%. So for this year, we are asking for 0.3% to be added to existing 1.7 mm. so that we can increase it to um, 2%. And that is what we are looking at here. And we believe that um, government should have the, uh, the desire or the willingness to look at these issues and uh, take very firm de decisions on them. Right. I know we've held you for long, but final question, and it has to do with issues of the budget, which uh, debate started yesterday. You are asking government to also cut down on the size, uh, their current size, so that would show that they are also willing to sacrifice a bit more. You think that the policies in the variation that government has given, like reducing um, the, the e-levy uh, rate, for instance, and, and, and others, are not sacrificial enough and that they can do more? Um, we believe they should do more because it's about um, increasing uh, revenue generation. Because um, what we are seeing here is that um, there's, a ten there's a possibility that reducing um, the e-levy rate from 1.5 to 1 percent may um, possibly, it may encourage more people to start using um, the Momo system again. So that one may bring in something. But what we are asking for at this point is that government side is quite... Um, it's quite big at the moment. And um, the estimate shows us that about a third of the wage bill is used for taking care of government uh, functionaries, if I may put it that way. So if a third is being used to take care of government functionaries, then you'll see that there's a huge chunk that can be saved if we can do something about that side. And that's why we are looking at the downsizing of government. And that may also help us to improve on the uh, revenue generation. And we will have enough to invest. We are so grateful that you could make time to speak with us this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you for having me.